Good afternoon, everybody, and hello to you from different parts of the world. My name is Rupert Wesson. I'm a director at De Brett's and I'm your host for this webinar this afternoon. Welcome, welcome one and all. Um, what I would like to do, just while we wait for a few people to join, uh, one of the things I'm very conscious of is that when I run sessions, normally I get a lot of interaction with people. Um, it uh, Any sessions that I would normally run live become something of a discussion as much as a, a coaching and training session. What I would love to do today, just to get a little bit of interaction to find out um, that there are people who are out there, what I'd love you to do is go to the questions tab on the screen and to just jot down a couple of uh, quick words, a couple of sentences or two about when you would like to be more confident. Now, I should point out that the chat section of the um, of this webinar is, I believe, visible to everybody. But the questions, I know if you just put something in the question section, only only I can see that and I can have a look at that. And when I read a few bits out, I won't I won't share anybody's name, but it would be great to know a few things about what um, what it is that drives you to this session today. So by all means, just drop a few little things down in there. And let's just see whether anything is coming up. Here we go. OK, so I'm getting a few things coming in now. Uh, meeting new people, presenting and looking confident. That is good. And that's something that we're going to look at. I'll let you just fill that up a little bit. Uh, great to be more confident work and formal events. OK, great. Well, that fills up. Um, let me tell you a little bit about the session today. It's only 45 minutes long, which is um, which is pretty brief. A long, short time to cram quite a lot of useful things in. Um, I'm going to come up with five hacks. That's what I promised you. And these are five things that you can do straight away. Or some of them might be contextual. You could do them straight away if you go into a, an event where you need to be more confident. And whilst these hacks will instantly boost your confidence, they're also a really important part of building longer term confidence. Um, so this session should have a longer term impact. Um, I'll take some questions about halfway through, and I've actually got a couple more questions for you that I'll need some, some feedback on as we go through the session. So let me just have a look and see what people are talking about here. I'd like to feel more confident when I'm about to start talking. Somebody has put managing hostile people, job interviews, great. And to come across confident uh, and authentic during client pitches and meetings. Great. Those are all things that the sorts of things we're going to um, talk about today will will help support. Uh, in the chat section, we've got um, confidence in dealing with difficult staff. Great. OK, let me let me make a start and let me start with the confession. In fact, I don't really think of myself as super confident. That might surprise you. Uh, there we are. Now, there are plenty of things that I do that people would see need quite a lot of confidence, such as webinars, for example. Um, but there's lots of other things to do. Speaking to large audiences. I do TV stuff, radio stuff. I've even done live comedy. Do I always look and sound confident? Yeah, pretty much so. I think I do. Am I always confident? Not always. Um, am I getting more confident as time goes by? Absolutely. And I am always getting more confident. And really, that's what this session is all about. And as I said, today's session, I'm promising you some hacks and things you can do straight away. I think the idea is that you can start doing some of these things in a very small way straight away because there's no magic bullet for confidence. There's nothing that can suddenly transform you in a moment. And I think anything that that gets you to dial up this confidence level can, can too quickly can easily be undermined. So my advice is to build things slowly. And, and that's what we're going to do today is to put some interesting things into, into practice there. Um, so yeah, today is about becoming more confident in the things that you need to be more confident. Now, actually, starting in a very confessional note, I should point out that I also have ADD, attention deficit disorder, which means I can't always rely on my brain to retrieve the right bits of information at the right moment. 
And trust me, that does nothing for your confidence. So uh, a lot of the things I'm talking about today are things that really help me. Um, and I'm absolutely certain they'll help you. They're sort of coping mechanisms for you and um, for me that I've, I've developed. And, and I'm, a lot of them, I think, will be useful for you. OK, I've just seen a few more things pop up in the comments. So let's have a look. Somebody said, uh, when I have to give a speech in front um, to people. Um, OK, that's a good one to be less self-conscious when public speaking. Um, do you believe confidence has something to do with acting? That's a really interesting point. I'm going to touch on that very theme in a couple of minutes. Brilliant. Thank you for those little bits of input. Um, and I will come back to you shortly with a, with a couple more questions. I, a few things I'd like some input on. Oh, now, the other thing to point out is, and thank you for bearing with us, where we changed platform at the last minute, uh, really simply due to demand, and we needed the platform that could support the demand we had and the session that we want to give. What I'm doing there is carefully building up an excuse. So if I have any technical hitches, I'm just explaining um, why I'm going to be jumping around a bit on this it's a newer system to me. OK, let us get straight involved in hack number one. When we want to get good at something, who do we look at? It's the experts. Who is good at looking confident? OK, that's my question to you. Who is good at looking confident? I want to go back to the questions box and I'd love you to drop a few ideas in now about who you think is good at looking confident. So it can be a group of people, a type of people, it could even be a specific person that, that we might know. Who do you think is good at looking confident? And this is quite important. OK, somebody has come up. Uh, doctors, medical experts. That's a really interesting one. Um, would you keep going back to see a doctor if they weren't confident? Um, would you have faith? in a doctor who's uh, who in their advice if they weren't confident who else have you got prince william yeah interesting one funnily enough that that's hugely relevant sales people good yeah a lot of sales is built on confidence politicians again really hard really important somebody come up with kevin hart the actor that's a really good one um he's kind of pretty honest and open and out there and great fun Good. These are really interesting ideas. And actually, as I look down there, I think Kevin Hart's the only actor that we have down there. And I think actors are a really good suggestion in this context. And I'm coming back to the point that somebody's already circling around already, that there is, um, for me, there's a difference between looking confident and being confident. But if you can look confident, then that's all people have to go on when they look at you. If all you've managed to do is to look confident rather than feel or be confident, actually you're halfway there. That's hugely important. And this is interesting. This is why often we look to actors as being uh, really good examples of people who are confident. Now, I'm going to circle back to that very idea in a moment, because what I want to talk about hack one is the idea of um, what I'm calling modeling, not that sort of modeling, modeling. Um, if you think about uh, some of you out there, I'm sure, play golf. Some of you will play tennis. And when you want to get better at these sports, you have a trainer or a coach. And if, for example, we think of golf, and I don't play golf, but if, if somebody wants to get better at golf, they go along to a coach. And the coach will break down their technique. And the coach will look at maybe how they hold the bat stick club thing um, they might look at how they stand they might look at how they swing it back how they connect with the ball they might look at the follow-through and all of those sorts of things they'll break it down and actually golfers who want to get better guess what they do they look at people who are good who's thought about this as an idea in relation to confidence sometimes we just look at confident people and go wow that's amazing they're confident we don't often think about what they're doing and how they're doing it so my first hack for you today 
is that whenever you're in a situation, you're in a room with people who look confident, have a look at what they're doing. I'm going to show you a little clip now, or at least I'm going to try and show you a little clip of video, assuming the technology is going to work for me. Here we go, a little thing I just picked off YouTube. So there's a bit of a little ad. Okay, guess what? Who appears on the red carpet here? Princess Catherine and Prince William. There we go, we talked about somebody who's confident. Let's just have a little look at them here. Let's see what they do. Okay, they look pretty confident. They look pretty pleased to be there. And actually, we can just take it all in. And they look really pretty comfortable being in the spotlight, in the glare, on the red carpet. Okay, let's just um, break this down. There are really four things that you need to think about. Smiling eye contact, pacing, and body language. So next time you're in a situation where you feel you're in a room full of confident people, just look at those few things. And what you can do is, to a certain extent, you can copy them. I'm not talking about doing an impersonation, but just reflecting those little things back. Because those are the things, and trust me, I spent a lot of time coaching people on confidence. Those are things that, that actually are the real indicators of confidence. So let me just run this little clip of video again. And we'll see Prince William and Princess Catherine walking in. And I'll just show you now. I talked about all of these things. We talk about smiling. Great. Look at that. We can see the smiles hoving into view. The confident body language Prince William reaches out there, making eye contact, smiling. Posture. Again, it's incredibly difficult when you're in that much of a spotlight, that many people looking at you, to try and look confident. Look at that casual, relaxed wave. All of these things can be taught. All of those things can... Oops, and let me just go back to back to the screen. All of those things you can do. So next time you're in a room, and you're feeling a little uncertain, look around, look at the people who look really confident and comfortable being there, and just look at the things that they're doing. And I guarantee they will be doing most of those things pretty well. What I also guarantee you, if you look really closely, is that you perhaps won't see them as quite as confident as you thought they were when you look at that. And that's because most of the gap between what people perceive as real confidence and their own confidence, or big confidence and their own confidence, isn't as great as they perceive. And what you will do by being able to uh, observe other people is you'll naturally pick up those things and you will look more confident. And trust me, you'll feel more confident for doing those. There's a long scientific explanation um, in a longer course, and I can explain all about that. But trust me, by doing those little things, that will make a huge, huge difference. Okay, so that is the acting as if, and somebody put in the in the chat and the questions about um, how important is acting. Acting is hugely important because what you do is you are to a certain extent fooling other people. You, they reflect their confidence in you back to you, and you then act as if, and it, you create a very positive spiral. So a little bit of acting goes a long way. Okay, that's hack number one. Hack number two, remember um, that this is de Bretz and this is about etiquette. So what has confidence got to do with etiquette? Well, let me start with our definition of etiquette, which is nothing more than etiquette is care and consideration for other people. How does that help you with confidence? Let me explain. I'm going to fire another question your way. A fun question, but this is quite important. I want you to think at the moment the least the most embarrassing recording artist a singer or a band whose music whose output offends you um, and whose very success remains a mystery to you and in the question section again I'd just like you to jot down the name of that band or that artist who you are mystified by 
let's have a few a few examples Dan. who is so uncool it's frightening in the world of music these days let's just see if we can get a few of those answers coming in okay miley cyrus top of the list jedward jed goodness me there's a blast from the past um i once shared a plane with jedward um and guess what? They were dressed exactly as they do. Uh, and in fact, um, some relatives of mine once went on holiday with them. They're charming. Trust me. OK, let's go. I think Jedward's, Jedward's a great example. Really interesting. OK, now there was a reason for asking that slightly spurious question. Um, and I'm going to come back to this and I will be able to um, I'll be able to relate it to to what we're what we're talking about around the idea of confidence. OK, there's a really interesting behavior experiment done by a, an American behavioral scientist. He got a whole bunch of students together and he said to them, OK, I want you to do an experiment for me around networking. And he said to them, OK, next week on Tuesday night, you're going to come back to, to me here and I'm going to give you a little briefing about going off to some networking events where you go and have to gather some information. The students all say, OK, fine, yes, we can do that. Um, and he set up another group of students to to run networking events and to be networking events and they all said right okay we'll come back next tuesday now just before he went he asked them that same question he said who's the least cool recording artist you can think of right now now this was a few years back this is in the early 80s and the fairly unanimous answer came back as the most uncool recording artist was barry manlow so following Tuesday, everybody assembled, ready to do this great behavioral science experiment. The people going to the networking events assembled in one room. There were a whole other bunch of people assembled in a network in networking events in other rooms. And just before he sent his, his guinea pigs off to these networking events, he said, oh, I've got you a whole load of t-shirts. I want you to wear them during the networking events and the t-shirts, guess what? Barry Manilow t-shirts. And people, oh no, we're not wearing them. It's hideously embarrassing. But that was part of the deal. So they all put on their Barry Manilow t-shirts and they went to the networking events and they had a whole load of information they had to gather from people. But they felt incredibly self-conscious as they went in there wearing these desperately, desperately uncool t-shirts. And they came back and at the end of the evening they they reported their findings and the professor said, how do you feel? And they went, oh, everybody was looking at me, it was horrific. I felt so embarrassed, you know, God, I never want to do that again. And of course that wasn't the real part of the experiment, the other part was going into the networking events and asking the people in there, did you notice anybody coming in wearing a Barry Manilow t-shirt? And of course, most people didn't even notice. Those, a lot of those people who actually did notice, and this we're talking about the minority now, just thought the person was being cool and ironic. Um, and very few people sort of thought it was actually super weird, but for the most part, nobody really noticed. And this is my point to you, that when you're walking into an event, you feel incredibly self-conscious. But the reality is, the disappointing truth almost, is that fewer people are looking at you than you think. And even fewer people are consciously judging you. Now, as humans, we subconsciously judge. Very few people are consciously judging you. And, and people aren't really making decisions. And actually, if you can connect with people on a human level, that actually creates a much more powerful first impression. So my point in all of this is to think about that spotlight effect and the fact that you think everybody's looking at you to remember people aren't looking at you. And that allows you to relax a bit. And the whole point about this idea is that what you should do is pay attention to other people in the room and not pay attention to your own discomfort. Now, this is where etiquette comes in. Because etiquette is care and consideration for other people. So connecting with other people, talking to them, finding out about them. Uh, go off and say, well, can I get you a drink? Can I you know, introduce you to some of my friends? That helps you get over that real sense of, everybody's looking at me and I don't feel confident. It's that reflecting back out. So fewer people notice you. And secondly, focus on other people and not on your own discomfort. OK, how are we doing for time? Let's just see. OK, what I'm going to do now is um, throw the question chat open to you. Just thinking about those first two ideas, any questions, thoughts or observations on on those first two ideas?
Oops, somebody's put forward Sam Smith as an uncool recording artist. Just goes to show. Okay, anything coming through? No, nothing coming through on the questions at the moment. Something. Yeah, now somebody just popped up and said that, um, yeah, when you realise that other people in a similar position to you, all of a sudden, yeah, that does help enormously with your confidence. It's a great leveller, a great equaliser. And again, if you look around at other people, you'll quickly realise that, that people aren't as confident as you thought they were. OK, and, and, and added to that, they've just just added that they always feel like a fraud. <clears throat> um, imposter syndrome um, is a really interesting idea, and I've, I've got some ideas on that I can talk to you later on. But the most important thing to remember about imposter syndrome is there's no such thing as imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome is in itself a fraud, um, and there's a huge irony in that, but there is absolutely no research that says imposter syndrome is actually a thing it's it's a way of thinking about things it's a way of looking at things um, and i might circle back to that um, at the end because it relates to the last section that we're, we're going to talk about okay let's have a look um a few things have come up on chat oh i see chat loads bottom to top and questions load top to bottom um Great, yeah. Confident people aren't afraid to be proved wrong. Absolutely. And again, somebody just endorsing that idea that, that etiquette can actually be a really helpful tool with confidence. Often a lot of the reason that people aren't aren't polite is because they're they lack the confidence to step out of their comfort zone and connect with people. Actually, if you use the basic principles of etiquette, which is care and consideration for other people, that can really help you connect with other people and help your confidence. OK, well, thank you for your questions and comments. Let's just dive back in and see what's come up. And again, yeah, somebody talked about not afraid to be wrong. This is one of the things about um, going into social situations, particularly. What have you got to lose? What's the likelihood of you getting things wrong? If you and we'll we'll talk about that theme on hack four. Okay, let's go into uh, into hack three, which is specifically about how to look confident in social situations. I want you to focus on the idea that uncertainty breeds doubt. That's a, that's a fairly general rule. Now, if you've put that into the context of a social event and you walk into a room, nobody knows who you are and you don't know who anybody else is. There's your uncertainty. And one of the most effective ways of, of removing that uncertainty, removing that doubt, is quite simple. It's going to find out what people's names are. A really simple idea. Uh, it's the idea of introducing yourself. By introducing yourself, you give a name, you can even say where you're from or how you connect with that event. And in doing so, you resolve doubt in other people's minds as to who you are and you boost their confidence. And guess what? It gets worked both ways. For my part, I hate being in a group, in part of a conversation and not knowing who anybody else is. But I also feel really uncomfortable when I'm part of a group or a conversation and people don't know who I am. And, and yes, it does take a certain amount of impetus to get to that point where you introduce yourself. Hello, everyone. My name's Rupert. Lovely to meet you. But just that act there, it just opens everything up. Why don't we do it? I guess one of the main reasons that people don't do it is they don't feel they're important enough. So let me just tell you this. There is nobody who is too humble that they need to remain anonymous. And I want you to carry that idea around with you, that when, if, whenever you're in any walk of life, 
there is no need for you to remain anonymous. Now, particularly if you've been invited to an event, goodness me, people want to know your name. So never use um, this idea of humility as a reason to remain anonymous. We all have an identity um, and we should share that with everyone we meet. But by the same token, um, no one is too important to introduce themselves by name. <laughs> Let me tell you a little story. I'm very lucky in this job, but I get to meet lots of interesting people. And sometimes I get to meet uh, famous people. And I remember one specific week in the same week, I met a famous actor and I met a famous public political figure, actually the wife uh, of a politician, uh, but famous in her own, own right. And I met the actor at a party and he came up and introduced himself and said, oh, hello, my name's Hugh. It was, in fact, Hugh Grant. And he was absolutely charming and lovely. Now, at the moment he walked up, I knew exactly who he was. But that wasn't the point. By introducing himself as Hugh, he is breaking down barriers and saying, hello, I'm pleased to meet you. I'm delighted to talk to you. And, and this is my name and this is how you should refer to me. And please don't feel you must stand and look at me from a distance. I like talking to people. The famous um, politician's wife was at a networking event and she was working her room, working the room as as was the role. And, and I said hello and she didn't really say anything. In me saying her name, she quickly realised that I wasn't one of the very, very wealthy, ultra high net worth people in the room. And she just moved on without saying a word. And and it was mystifying. It, it does leave a very lasting impression, but but absolutely no barrier had broken, had, had been broken down in that interaction. So my point is, you're never too humble to introduce yourself to people um, and no one is too important to introduce themselves. And it's really, really critical. Being ignored is not good for anybody's confidence. Now, there's a little um, follow on to this idea in that when we meet people, how often do you meet people? You meet a group of four people and you say hello and get their names and you reach the end of the line and you can't remember anybody's name so there's a little sub hack here that's going to be really useful for you because names are so important once you know names you can use names so if the technology is going to work again which i hope it will i'm going to share a little simple little slide of things that will help you to remember people's names when you meet them at a networking event a really simple little hack and actually a lot of these points i'm pretty confident you'll know them already how to remember names top tip top hack read the list either before you get to the event or read the list when you get to the door if it's it's a relatively small event you can actually as they tick your name off on the list you can look down and look for a few names there so when you go into the event and you hear people's names or you can you can look out for people or if it's people you once met and you've forgotten them, you've got a little head start there because you've seen their name on the paper. OK, another big tip, and I'm going to talk a bit more about this in a minute, but slow down. And when you meet people, make eye contact. Use your greeting, which in the good old days used to be shaking hands, less so these days, and then say your name and say their name as part of that greeting. Hello, my name's Rupert. Lovely to meet you. John. Hello, John. Lovely to meet you too. Say your name, say their name. And by using that name in that instance, here's the great thing. The name will start to embed in. If you just rush through the line too quickly, you'll never remember that. Next thing I say, use the name. So use the name again in conversation. Some people say use it three times in the next minute or don't worry too much about how often you have to use it, but just keep using it. Firstly, we love to hear people using our names. But secondly, it helps you to remember it. If, if you're struggling with the name or you've forgotten it, ask for help. None of us are perfect. Get help using it and then you can go back into using the names. Listen for the names being used in conversation as well as, as people talk to each other. That will prompt you to remember people's names. Some people use a technique, you know, Robert with the red tie, Bob with the blue shirt, whatever it might be. And if all else fails, again, just ask if you've forgotten somebody's name. Once you have names and you start using them, you look and sound more confident. And it's much easier to address somebody in conversation if you know their name. Oh, Mary, could you just, yeah, you were talking about, 
It's much easier to start a conversation that way. And don't be afraid of getting them wrong. We always get them wrong from time to time. The point is you've tried, and the point is when people have corrected you, you've listened, and you've got it right. So that is one of my other great confidence hacks, hugely important. Okay, let's go back out of that. Back into. Okay, let's look at hack number four. I talked about pace, really, really important. We talk about confidence, um, maybe in a social situation. Um, people were talking about giving pitches at business events, pitching for business, um, dealing with hostile people, somebody talked about. Pace, slow it down. When we get in those pressure situations, guess what? Our body starts producing an adrenaline. It's part of the, the fight or flight thing. I can talk a little bit more in detail about that, but let's keep it simple. When your body produces adrenaline, the heartbeat starts driving up. Your focus actually gets narrower. The blood goes away from your um, core and into your extremities ready to run or whatever it might be. And all of these things um, make you less adept in a social situation fundamentally. Um, there's an interesting concept called emotional leakage. If you want to look to see whether people are nervous, look to see what they're doing with their extremities and they're really nervous. You might see that actually their arms might look quite relaxed, but actually you'll see their knuckles. You see white knuckles like that, or they might be drumming away quite nervously, or they might just be touching themselves like that at their extremities. Okay. So that's what happens when we're under pressure. Consciously slow things down. If you slow things down, do it by breathing, do it by consciously relaxing your body. Doing this allows you to watch more closely, to pay attention more closely, to listen more carefully. And if we just go back to that context of meeting people for the first time, often when you meet a group of people, you rush through it because you, you don't want to kind of waste time by being too slow and, and you don't want to hold things up because you're not worthy of holding it. Don't do that, take your time, make sure you get everybody's name slow it down. But you'll find uh, conversationally, slow things down. Put some pauses. In. Listen. And that will really help you. But it also portray confidence. And guess what? People reflect your confidence back to you. And, and you might discover that actually you're the more confident one in all of this. And your confidence will be a huge positive impact on everyone around you. So my hack there, hack number four, is is slow down in other words make sure you're not trying too hard which seems an odd thing to do but trust me it makes a huge difference stop trying too hard it allows you to be your own natural self okay let's go into the fifth and final hack this comes from the basic idea that confidence is bolstered by belief and it's bolstered by knowledge so the belief that you are confident going into any situation is really important. It's really good confidence to have. But if you've also got knowledge that actually when I go into this networking event, I'll be reasonably confident. Um, I'll be reasonably good. That's great because you've, you've done it a few times before. And this is my point in all of this is that you should never use a lack of confidence to stop you doing something. Um, so it shouldn't put you off doing something professionally. It shouldn't be a barrier to stopping you doing something actually you'd like to achieve in, in your personal life. Confidence should never be that excuse. So arm yourself with a little bit of belief and then arm yourself with a bit of knowledge. Look at times when you've done really well and use that and build, build on that. If you're um, not doing things because you feel you're not confident enough to do it, start chipping away very slowly. Have a plan and take positive action. And the, the good news is that you're doing it already by being here on this webinar. You're actually starting to take really positive action on that. So that's my last thing is making a start sometimes is all you have to do. By making a start, you're building yourself a platform, a, a little level time after time after time you to gradually build your confidence on and that's 
all it takes. The longer term um, confidence comes from doing exactly that, from, from building that those little, those little platforms. Okay, I've galloped very quickly through um, five hacks there. What I would love to do is to have any uh, questions or comments from you. Okay, and I have one here. Um, thank you for the great hacks. Do you believe how we speak, the tone and the pace of our voices may add to greater confidence? Yes. Now, I'm guessing you probably want a bit more than just a one word answer, but, but yes is the answer to that. I go to the idea of her pacing. That's really important, taking time. So by all means, speak quickly, but make sure that you um, put some pauses in. Pause for breath, allow other people to take a breath, allow yourself to take a breath, and that allows your message to go. And tone of voice is important. Generally speaking, when we're nervous, we get a bit higher and our voice doesn't come off quite as strong. Or some people really boom. Uh, generally speaking, yeah, just be conscious of your tone. But by following my ideas on pace, and I can talk a whole day about pacing, but that will make a difference. Uh, any advice on how to stop nerves when having to speak at a meeting? So let's just roll straight off the back of the last one. It's, it's a pause. Sometimes people have to fight for airspace to actually get a chance to speak. If somebody then suddenly turns, says, now, Rupert, what do you think? The first thing is to pause. Maybe even just to buy yourself a little time. Thank you. And then say less. That's always my advice. Um, conscious, there's a sort of cause and effect things. When we're nervous, we start speaking really rapidly. And we never pause for breath. And we just keep, keep, keep going. And we start thinking as we go, and you get really nervous. And then we realize we're not being very effective. And we keep talking and it just makes matters worse. So putting in some pauses will absolutely allow you to gather your thoughts and to be much, much more effective. The more effective you are, the more confident become, the more confident you are, the more effective you are. And you create yet another, another really positive spiral. Yeah, this is an interesting. Um, occasionally I've lectured um, and I've always felt very nervous. But when I asked everyone, they said, you seemed OK. Um, and this is a reference to that, that inner voice that somebody's talking about. Yeah. That last thing where I talk, uh, I talk about hack five is do something positive. One of the other positive things you have to do is to talk to yourself in a positive way. Um, have a think about the things that you would like to hear and say them to yourself. Look out for where things go well, rather than look out for where things have gone badly. That's my principal form of advice there. Um, any speech presentation, anything I've ever done, I, I could stand at this, take myself off at the end and think, I could have done that better. Every time we do things, we can do them better. But actually every time we do things, typically we are getting better. And actually let's focus on the really positive things we do. Just ignore that inner voice. And to be a great public speaker, you only have to be quite good because nobody, absolutely nobody is perfect. Good. Uh, let's see what else we've got coming in. Yep, somebody just endorsing the idea about uh, trying to visualize shifting the spotlight, especially in conversation, asking people about them. It, it is a great way. It's a great way of reframing the, the ideas and reframing um, things. Let me dive down into my chat list now. Uh, could you give me the bullet points of these five hacks? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm going to sum up, because I think we're just quite close to the end. I'm going to sum up with those bullet points again, and we can just send those out as a little, a little summary. Yeah, interesting. Somebody just popped up to me. I think being brushed off or ignored is behind low confidence. So I talked about the fact that I met this famous politician's wife and got pretty much brushed off. And yeah, it was a bit of a, a dig, but actually when people tend to be rude to brush you off to ignore you, more often than not, that's coming from a place of their own lack of self-confidence, their own lack of self-awareness. So don't take it personally when people do ignore you and 
and you walk away feeling a bit a bit hurt a bit smart don't don't take it to heart just accept the fact that often why well, the reason a lot of people don't reach out to you is for the same reason that you weren't so good at reaching out to them initially um it's again that sort of sense of nervousness and and almost a fear of rejection which is one of the reasons that people don't don't connect out never fear rejection um what's the worst that can happen the worst thing is just you can feel hurt about it and that's and that's it now what i'm going to do is oh, just run down here and can i summarize i am going to summarize by way of wrapping up so let's just go back into this back into this here we get a summary of what we've talked about today firstly model a confident behavior of others <clears throat> and i call this a hack because you can do this live in the moment but i'd also get you to watch tv and look at people who you see as being confident and look at what it is that they're doing that you think is making them look confident so model the confident behavior of others uh, both in the sense of observe it but also do it and that will help next hack focus on other people and not your own discomfort when you walk into that room and feel that everybody's looking at you remember they're not um, and then secondly focus on other people and that will take your mind off that discomfort that we all naturally feel a bit of when we walk into a room of people hack three introduce yourself it makes you look confident it breaks down the barriers and it makes everybody more comfortable and things can move on so don't hold back remember you're never too humble to introduce yourself and nobody's too important that they don't need to introduce themselves to you either hack four slow down i could do a whole day talking about the importance of this but slow down in terms of your actions slow down the speed you walk into the room slow down the way you meet and greet people and to a certain extent slow down the way you connect with people pay them a little bit more attention and last but not least hack five take positive action in any situation you find yourself in what's the positive action talk to yourself positively about it and then take positive action to help build your confidence in the long term that ladies and gentlemen concludes all of the the content that i had today i'm going to stick around for a few more questions if people have them very happy to, to talk about those but let me conclude by by saying um the confidence is a hugely important part of etiquette and etiquette is at the core of what we do in the Brett's. we do coaching online uh, we hope to go back to doing live live programs very very soon we nearly did one uh, but unfortunately that the rules and regulations got in the way we've had to had to cancel that but we'll go back to doing live programs uh we're actually creating some online learning that will come out very soon um, and that again will help help you um, learn from our accumulated knowledge so let me wrap up by thanking you all for joining delighted to have any feedback you want on this topic um, you've all got, I think, Dan's emails, email address, so you connect with him in any way you want. And again, if you want to just leave some, some comments in either the chat or the questions at the end for us, we'd be delighted to read it. I'm going to stick around for another 10 minutes or so and can tackle any questions that, that pop up. But thank you all for joining us and we look forward to seeing you again. OK, for those who are staying on, let's jump in and see if there's any Questions popping up in there. And <laughs> somebody's suggesting here um, that somebody wants uh, assumed the air of Prince Charles while speaking. Uh, it turned out he'd watched all his videos to learn English. <laughs> yes, that's great. And funny enough, I had a friend who wrote speeches for Prince Charles, and whenever he was writing a speech, he used to assume the airs of Prince Charles to give the speeches a bit more uh, gravitas. But yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, don't don't copy people, but just copy their positive habits. Yeah, 
somebody's also chipped in. A great professor once said, never take anything personally, even if you think it was meant to be taken personally. Great advice. Not always easy to do, but just keep that in the back of your, your mind. That's um, really useful. So, uh, somebody here has put, uh, I live in Manhattan, rules don't apply. Uh, <laughs> that could possibly be true. Um, we're not planning to put the video of this um, up on um, up, but we can certainly share share the the bullet points with you. Yeah, somebody was talking about introducing yourself with social distancing. Yeah, in the good old days, we used to be able to shake hands. The important point about uh, an introduction is is making a connection. And in the good old days, part of the connection was a handshake. But in many ways, the more important connection is with the eye contact and with the smiling. So I wouldn't go so far as to say it doesn't matter what you do outside of those two things. My advice would always be focus on those two things. Get that eye contact and connection and get that smile too. That will make a, a huge, huge difference. Oh, Gravitas. Top three tips for Gravitas. Good uh good question top three, t three tips probably we've covered those to a certain extent already pace is absolutely one of them um one of our phrases in debrets is that you never see a gentleman or a gentlewoman hurrying so pace slow things down it doesn't mean speak slowly but it means just slow everything down that helps taking time to think that also helps that that is a great, um, great multiplier for Gravitas. Uh, top three tips. And again, maybe just something on the idea of connecting with other people. People with Gravitas connect with other people. So it's about thinking about other people and going back to the earlier hack uh, I was talking about, which is to focus on other people and not your discomfort. How to disagree agreeably. Um, interesting with that question, what I would interestingly just start on is, is how not to disagree, um, which is to apologize. I'm sorry, but I'm going to disagree with you. It because it sounds insincere. If If you were truly sorry you wouldn't be disagreeing at all so uh, the best thing is is to is to find this is something else brits are quite good at is this softening frame what i'd like to do with you there is to pick up on something you just said and i'd like to challenge that if that's okay now when you say if that's okay you don't you're not looking for their permission to go on but nevertheless what you're doing is you're softening the fact that you're going to disagree disagreement's a wonderful thing and and we seem to have got um, very much politically at the moment into a time where people have become utterly binary in their viewpoints. And this means that, that nobody can disagree. One side has to hold their point, the other hand, and, and, there's, <laughs> and there is no point in that there is disagreement, but it's never done in a sense that um, you're trying to change the other person's mind. So using what we call softening frames is a great way of doing that. I'd like to take issue with your last point. I agree with almost all of that. And what I'd like to add is, and therefore what you're doing is you're softening it and it doesn't seem like a challenge. That's a very quick summary of how to disagree. Yeah, absolutely. There's uh, the point the lady who asked the question has said, and for women in business, we recommend not to ask permission to, to disagree as it's not as assertive. <laughs> I think, generally speaking, it, it, is, it isn't a bad thing to do. Um, I think once you get more comfortable with people, you, all of that other stuff can just fall away. But I think when you're in a slightly tense situation, whilst I absolutely never apologise for disagreeing, I often put a softening frame around it. And you're not actively seeking permission, but you're creating the illusion that you're seeking permission to disagree. Uh, once once people get comfortable with disagreeing with each other, um, 
then actually you, you don't need the softening frames because people are comfortable already. One of the other interesting ideas is when you know you're having a conversation with somebody, you're probably going to end up disagreeing with them. Great to, to talk positively about the things you do agree about before you get to the point of disagreement. That again helps to build up trust, a positive relationship, and means that people are more likely to listen to you when it does come to disagreement. Uh, and then the same uh, lady has popped up. How can women be seen as assertive and not bossy? Remember, you're not you're not bossy. You are the boss, as Beyonce said that, which is a great quote. Yeah, that, that you shouldn't see yourself as being different. The challenge is other people will see you as being different. Again, try and take emotive language out of it. Um, that's something we should, generally speaking, all do when we're having these disagreements. Um, but it is, yeah, that is a challenge. And that that uh, our Impact for Women program absolutely deals with, with that. Um, but that's quite, it does, does require quite a long a long um, session. Now, let me dive down to the bottom here. Ooh, and Oh, an interesting one here um, around confidence. Uh, I'm usually afraid of making mistakes, especially when I speak in another language. <coughs> don't, <laughs> absolutely don't be. It's very easy for me to say that. Communication is, is, is critical, but if people are not um, are not making allowances for you speaking in another language, then I think that represents a lack of confidence on their part, and and that their their view is going to become a barrier. So by all means, flag up and say, you know, to to, to get people on side and say, I'm sorry, I'm speaking in my second language, but please bear with me. That will just remind people that you're having to work extra hard and that will buy people buy people a little time. But never um, never worry about the fact that you're not speaking perfect, perfectly in your second language. That's an incredibly hard thing to do. It's all about connecting and communicating. Um, great, that's it. I think the questions are just about done. I'm going to jump off at this point. But it has been a pleasure talking to you all. Thank you all very much for your time. And I look forward to reconnecting with you all at some point in the not too distant future. So thank you one and all. Cheerio.